Way back when, when I started Alby fishing, our lure selection, our options for throwing at Albies was very, very slim. Back then, you were really limited to metal jigs, slender metal jigs like the Deadly Dick, the Acme Sting Silver, uh, the Acme Needle Eel. Like the, those were the standard Alby lures, I'd say 15 years ago. Um, and, and they had their limitations. They were great because they would cast far. You know, they were the right profile of the bait fish the Albies like to eat, but they weren't the most realistic looking and you had to retrieve them really fast. Like, I, I mean, you had to burn them in in order to get them into the range of Albies, skipping across the surface. Then a little bit after that, a new type of lure came on the scene and that was called the Maria jig. So instead of those standard metals where they were all either painted lead or tin, the Maria jig had a metal insert with an epoxy coating. Now the lure wasn't perfect, that epoxy would yellow over time and sometimes it would chip or melt if it got in touch with the wrong kind of soft plastics, but it was a great lure for false albacore. Then I wanna say it was probably around 2009, 2010 that they stopped making the Maria jig and it was, uh, it was back to metal lures if you wanted that super long casting presentation for Albies. We had a couple years of that and then you started to see lures made in the style of the Maria jig come about and one of them available to, uh, to us Alby fishermen today is the Joe Bags resin jig. So what these lures have done, these resin jigs, they've taken that original Maria style and improved upon it. For one, the epoxy is gonna be a lot harder and more durable. It's gonna resist, you know, getting knocked on the jetty rocks as you're bringing the lure in. It's gonna resist the bluefish. It also doesn't yellow. That was, the bad, that was my main knock against the Maria jigs was that over time that epoxy would turn yellow and what was once a perfect silver side imitation uh, began to look a little jaundiced. So these will hold their color, that epoxy is gonna stay clear and the insert, what it's uh, molded around, that's gonna be the color you get. Also Joe Bags Lures, being a Northeast based company owned by Joe D'Augustino, he, they have a better selection of colors geared toward our fishery. So you have you know, your bone white, classic Alvey color, you have a chartreuse over white, another good one. Your pinks. I mean, so he is making these jigs, these lures, with our species in mind here in the Northeast. So this style of lure, these resin jigs, uh, they've kind of become their own category over the last few years where they're not quite metal lures, you know, because they, they cast very well, but they don't sink. They don't sink like a stone. They have a lot more inherent action. And uh, the, the mold of these resin jigs the way it's set up is you have kind of a hard sloping bottom that's gonna help this jig plane to the surface pretty quickly, even on a moderate retrieve. Now, you think Albies, you definitely are gonna be retrieving faster for them than you would for striped bass, but it's not always uh, real as fast as you possibly can to get them to eat. Some days, they want it skipped across the surface. Other days, it's a little bit more moderate. So the design of the resin jig helps you to get it high in the water column without having to retrieve super fast. Beyond false albacore, I mean, this is a, a imitation of a great variety of bait fish, bay anchovies, sand eels, spearing. So while the first thing you think of when you see this style of jig is definitely false albacore and bonito, you know, the, the fast moving pelagic species, it's really a jig style you can use for, for a great variety of species. People have, have adopted them to their striped bass fishing, bluefish fishing, and uh, even black sea bass, you know, can vertical jig them. You, you can work these lures in such a variety of ways, and that's why fishermen have found a ton of uses for them here in the inshore waters in the Northeast. But also, if you scale that size up, it's a great lure style for taking out for bluefin tuna as well. Now, in the resin jig series, uh, I know they make a three, a four, and a six ounce that they call the big game series, and that's gonna come through wired. It's gonna be a bigger profile, but it's still, you have all the benefits of that epoxy style jig, where it casts pretty well, but it's not gonna sink like a stone, has a lot of uh, inherent action to it, and it's a good match to the bait fish, both in profile and color. And when you get these school bluefin around and they're on sand eels, it's a great lure, one, for reaching them, reaching the feeds when they're far away, and two, of, of getting these fish when they're keyed into a certain profile to eat. In addition to those slender bait fish profiles, Joe Bags also makes a deeper bodied one, the peanut resin jig. And early in the season, especially this year, it's looking like it's gonna be a big peanut bunker year. We're seeing them all summer. And uh, once the Albies show up in force, you know they're gonna be eating them. So when the Albies are on peanuts, you have a deeper bodied version of this epoxy style jig that's gonna be a closer match to that hatch. And it's the same style jig. You have the metal insert with the foil or the color in there covered with that resin 
that's gonna add durability and even give the bait a little bit more of a lifelike look in the water because so many of the bait fish that Albies feed on and Benito feed on, they are translucent. I mean, think of a bay anchovy, think of a spearing. You know, that bait, you can practically see through them. You hold it up to the sun, you can see all their bones and innards. And that's the type of effect that these, these resin jigs have in the water. So when I'm rigging up one of these jigs for false albacore, I like to use a non-slip mono loop to attach the jig to my leader. And that's because I want this bait to be able to move freely when it's on my line. I don't want it to have a cinch down to a clinch knot or a polymer knot. I feel like that's gonna restrict the action of the lure a little bit. So when I use a non-slip mono loop, the lure is gonna have a little bit more action to it as I retrieve it through the water. I know some fishermen like to use the clips, like the tactical angler's clip. I love it for my surf fishing for striped bass. For albies, I'm kind of a minimalist. I want the least amount of hardware. I have no hardware between my braid and my leader. I do a, a, an FG knot or a uni to uni knot there, and I want just a non-slip mono loop. It's a very strong knot, adds action to the lure, and is a, a great secure connection for these jigs. So just like the original resin jig goes up in size to those larger bluefin tuna sizes, same with the resin peanut style jig. And when I saw these, my first thought was butterfish, uh, late fall, fishing for bluefin tuna. And what seems to happen in October here on Cape Cod is you get an influx of these juvenile butterfish and bluefin tuna love eating them. Butterfish are a mixed blessing for bluefin tuna anglers. While the tuna love to eat these baits and you can see some incredible feeds of tuna ripping through schools of butterfish, they can also be pretty tough to imitate. So with a larger version of that deeper bodied resin jig, you have a pretty great butterfish imitation that's going to have the same profile as those baits and also have a similar action. You know, the, the butterfish are in the top 10 feet of the water column when the tuna are feeding on them. So a metal jig of this shape might sink a little too fast. You might have to retrieve it too quickly to get the bites from them. So this allows you to slow down a little bit, keep that lure in front of the tuna, and improve your odds of getting bit. So fall is the peak season for fishing this style of jig, like the Joe Bags resin jig. And uh, the only question is not whether to have them in the bag, but what size and what colors to throw. Uh, everybody has their own opinion about what colors are best for false albacore lures especially. I know my favorites, I tend to lead toward the bone type colors like this one. I also happen to like chartreuse, but if the bay anchovies are around, something with a little gold or amber in it is a good one. We'd love to hear your favorite uh, colors for the Albi jigs below. And if you're heading out this fall, make sure you have one of these type of jigs in here, like the Joe Bags resin jig. It's a real versatile bait. And this style of lure has come such a long way from those Maria jigs 15, 20 years ago to the point where this is a bait that I keep on me all year round, but especially in the fall.